In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can make these projectiles in Roblox Studio. You can move the points around and it will update. These are all physics based. And yeah, just keep moving the points around. It keeps updating and you can update the time it takes for the projectile to reach its end. And uh, yeah. In the description, there's a link to the module. And if you go to your toolbox and go to your My Models, you will see the projectile module when you have downloaded it and got it into Studio. And I'm going to put it in replicated storage because that's just, you know, where it usually goes. There is a little bit of setting up, but if you go to the projectile at the top here, there are some directions for how to kind of set it up and how you can use it. You can delete it if you guys know how to use it. I advise you guys to look at this tutorial before deleting it. So passing into our function, we need four things. That has to be on a table, position one, position two, duration, and position two object. So basically we need the position from where it starts, where it ends, how long it will take, and the actual object where we are getting the position from. You guys might be wondering why we need this, but it is to calculate uh, some mass stuff. It's to, uh, if you look down here, it's to get some assembly, linear velocity type stuff and different stuff like that to calculate the force that the function returns. So we need to make our two points. So I'm going to insert a sphere. I'm going to make it like two by two by two. I'm going to make it red. I'm going to make it anchored, can collide, set to false. And I'm going to position it like right here. And I'm going to duplicate it, put it over here. I'm going to make this one green. And I'm going to call this from, because this is where it starts, and this is to, because this is where it is going. And then just to start, we need our actual projectile. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to scale it down to like uh, one by one by one. I'm going to give it like a gray, maybe neon color, something like this. And to make it look a little better, I'm going to give it a trail I couldn't think of the word a trail so that we can actually see it when it's in air so make two attachments position them on top and bottom sides insert a trail in your trail set attachment zero to the attachments and attachment one to the other one and we have a trail here I'm just gonna switch the properties so I'm gonna set lifetime to like 0.65 something like that and the width scale I'm gonna set this let me make sure you guys can see this. So when you pull up the width scale down here, it shows this screen. And I'm just going to make it so this point drags down so that it has a nice animation when it's moving back and forth. And by the way, make sure your projectile is not anchored. And we're just going to set can collide to true. Also going to name this projectile. And that's basically it. We can get into the coding. So when doing this, this needs to be ran on a server script because physics only run on the server. And if the client were to do it, well, it just wouldn't work at all because physics do not run on the client. So obviously, we need to get our projectile module here. So projectile, and we got it. I'm just going to say wafer child projectile. Let me make this a little bit cleaner so you guys don't see that. Okay, and then here... We're going to say projectile. You guys should see a new uh, function there. And that's basically what we are calling right here. We are getting the new. And we are passing in the object, which is basically our projectile. And we need what's called a metric table. A metric table is basically our information that we send in. Uh, it's basically what I've shown here at the top for our directions. All right. So I'm going to get our projectile that's in the workspace. I did not even spell this right. Let me let me fix that. Okay, so local projectiles equal to game dot workspace wafer child projectile. That's going to be our object that we are actually using for our projectile. And then we need a metric table. So I'm going to make a new table, which is called metric table. And again, that takes our positions and all of our information. So I'm just not going to make variables for these. I'm going to say game dot workspace dot two. Uh, wait, from dot position because that's where we start. And then game dot workspace dot two dot position. And then we need our duration. I'm going to set that to one. And then I need our 
uh, position to object, which is just game.workspace.2. So then we, you can copy your metric table variable and send it in. You can just make a new table and send in the information. That is also an option, but probably just be more organized if you just did it like it is here. Oh, another thing I just caught here, I named these two things projectile, so it wouldn't really make much sense. I'm just going to call this projectile part, and we're going to send in projectile part to our object. And then finally, I'm going to put a wait on this so that we actually see it uh, working. So like two seconds, and this should all work. So we're going to look at it here, and we're going to run our game. And then we're going to see our projectile flies and hits the target. And also, guys, if you thought your projectile trail looked a little weird, you can just go into the properties and select face camera. And if we, like, do it again, it looks a little bit better. It makes the trail look a little bit better. And there it is again. So we, another thing we can also do is copy this and say while true do um, the projectile dot new. And if we wait one second, then it will give us a projectile every single second. So this looks pretty cool. Um, you can move your points. And, you know, you can move it all the way across the world and it still works. Now, you guys might be wondering about the duration, what that even means, like what that looks like. Well, if we set this to two, remember the arc, like the arc over was like just a normal, but this will be higher see it goes higher it takes longer for it to reach the point so it has a higher arc to it to get it there so it's a little bit longer so that's basically what the duration does how it works what it kind of looks like you know you can keep going up or you could even go down if we set this to 0 0.5 uh, it won't have much of an arc to it it's just really fast and yeah it's basically what the time does and another cool thing with this module is I have made it so that you can use it with models. So what I'm going to do here is make a bee because, you know, bees fly and whatnot. So I'm going to make a bee for you guys. And I am just, you know, it's not going to look the best. You know, this, <laughs> this is our bee. I'm going to get this made. So here is kind of our B, and I'm going to get these two parts, group it together, and I'm going to call it B. So when you are using models in the projectile system, when you are sending in the object, you actually send in the model and no other parts. But to make this work, you need to have set the primary part of your model to the main part of your actual model. So in this case, it's the B's body. So I'm just going to rename this to body so I know what, what it is. And I'm going to set the primary part of our model to the body. And another thing we need to do is weld all of our other parts together. So for every part that you have, we're going to insert a weld constraint. Part 0 will be body. Part 1 will be uh, the other part. So if you have lots of parts, you can just like select your body and go to model and then go to create weld constraints. Uh, to save time, but I like to do it this way. It's longer, but it's a little bit more organized in my opinion. So now that we have set the primary part, welded everything together, make sure nothing's anchored, and we're just going to make sure that can Clyde's on. Alright, so it is. So in here, we are going to send in our game.workspace.b, and that should pretty much all, all it takes, and we're just going to uh, put our one back for our time and I'm just going to set this to like three seconds so it's not as fast. I don't remember where I was last but uh, make sure your model which is my B here make sure everything all together have the primary part make sure in the script that you guys have set um, passed in the model and nothing else but the model and if we uh, run this you can see our B is flying and when we move it farther, it keeps flying across, and it, <laughs> it works. <laughs> oh, my. So you guys actually can send in models, and everything works. Okay, so let's take it up a notch, all right? So I'm going to clear this over here and just move stuff out of the way. What if we started to use bigger models? So I'm going to go to the toolbox, and I'm going to type in tree. I want to make a tree fly, and I'm going to insert this tree. And right away, we have to actually configure it so it works. So I'm going to select all of the parts, make so make it so it's not anchored. I'm just going to turn off cache shadow so we can see it better. 
make sure can collide is true. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it just looks better. And so we need to weld all these together. So make sure you have all of your parts selected. Go to model, and if you don't already have weld selected, then go here. Well, in find weld, and then click on it, and everything is welded together. So I think now our tree is done. We're just going to put it over here. In our script, we're going to pass in our tree, like I already have done here. And let's raise these up, because this is a big tree, and it might touch the ground. So let me space the points out like this, and let's click Run. So we have our... Oh, did I do something wrong? Oh, all right, guys, so I forgot to actually set the primary part of our tree, and that's just going to be our bark part uh, down there, so... Now, if we go back over here, oh, click run, and we have a flying tree. Let me actually pause that and have a wait on that so we can see it. But you guys can see there, the tree was flying. So if we click run again, and our tree is flying. Oh, it's cloning the tree like this, the orientation. So that's why it's starting out like it's slanted like that, like it's curved. But... We're still making trees fly, these big models fly, and that's pretty cool. And yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video, or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you guys did try the module, please let me know how you like it, if it helped you in any way. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.